I, I want to see the race. It's like anything else in life. If you want to do it right, you got to do it yourself. Junkyard Wars, where we challenge two teams of junkyard dogs to build monster machines in just 10 hours. And the only parts that they're allowed to use, they have to scrounge from our lovely junkyard. We've chosen eight teams from across the country to do battle in our yard of junk, and will be testing their contraptions to the limit. It's a knockout competition, so only the very best will make it through to the finals. The prize? The coveted Junkyard Wars trophy. Today, we're challenging the teams to build a dragster in just 10 hours. They'll have to race their contraptions for a straight eighth of a mile down a real dragster strip. Three head-to-head -head contests will separate the men from the boys, and the team with the fastest time will be through to the next round. So let's meet the teams. First up, two Mikes and a Joe are the Chicago Fire Team. Hi, I'm Mike Campbell. I'm a Chicago Firefighter Emergency Medical Technician. My teammates, Joe and Mike, I would trust them with my life. Hi, I'm Mike Morris. I've been on the Chicago Fire Department for about 14 years. I'm trying to do the best job I can do, not only for myself, but for my teammates. Hello, my name is Joe Morozik. Um, I'll be on the Chicago team in Junkyard Wars. I love the job. It's very dangerous. Anything that's dangerous, I love it. Get ready for some stiff competition, guys. <laughs> Flame fighters along, we're giving them the speed savvy of demon dragster expert Rob Hamilton. This guy's been burning rubber for 15 years. He lives, breeds, and sleeps engines. Riding in from Texas and wearing canary yellow, automotive artists Ken, Mark, and Sean are the Texas Scrap Daddies. Hi, I'm Mark Bradford. I'm a sculptor here in Houston, Texas. <laughs> I want to play with your junk. Hi, my name is Ken, and I work as a financial consultant. It'll put you to sleep most days of the week. We're building things out of scrap. Now that's exciting. Hi, I'm Sean Ham. I want to play in the junkyard! Spent nine years in the military as an aircraft mechanic. <laughs> Where's the Texas scrap daddy? <laughs> yeah, baby! Rule in the land of scrap. <laughs> help guide the scrap daddies to the finish, we've given them drag man Dan Lubinsky. When he's not racing over 200 miles per hour down the drag strip, he's actually building dragsters for kids. Chicago Fire! Yes. Texas Scrap Daddies! Yeah. You know, I've been thinking, and uh, I feel the need. The need for speed! Yes! Which can mean only one thing. That today, you have to build us a dragster! Right. Yeah. yeah! This is strictly a speed contest. However, I'd like to make a personal request that it look really cool and that it be really obnoxiously loud. Take it away, Kathy. Okay, well, Junkyard Rules have it that you have just 10 hours to build your contraptions from when the ball hits the bottom of the Junkyard time machine. Get ready? Which is any time. Easy. Ready? So the teams are off to their workshops, but before they can start building, they have to dream up a battle plan. You're pretty pleased about the speed business, aren't you? I can tell. No, no, I always obey the speed limit. <laughs> For our Chicago fireman, big is beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna, what do you think? We should get the biggest engine we could find, preferably yeah. a V8? Yeah, try to find a V8. The more power, the better. More power. <laughs> what about the frame, what do you think? Maybe we can use an old frame out of something. We just a uh, car out in the yard? No car frame. For maximum power, the firemen want to use a huge engine and mount it in the frame of an old car. To get the most traction, they plan to put the engine as far back as possible to get all that weight over the driving wheels. Okay, uh, we're going to need a list, guys. So, Mike, we'll go ahead and write down a list. We're going to need an engine, all right? A big engine, the big biggest end. engine. Big, big, there you go, big engine, all right? The fattest biggest tires for the rear 
um, and the skinniest tires for the front. We're going to need tubing, yeah. like you suggested, for the uh, roll cage to protect the driver. Uh, Safety is important. I don't want none of you guys getting hurt. In the workshop next door, our Texan friends are being, well, un-Texan. Light. Uh, everything light. Everything. Super light. That's what the key is. Super light. Um, are we going to just ladder frame or? Ladder frame it uh, for mostly construction, lightweight tubing. Um, so we'll use a motorcycle engine. Probably it's going to be our best bet. We don't need any suspension. We don't need any springs. Rapid though. It's just speed. Yeah. No comfort. No and beauty comes last. <laughs> The Texas Scrap Daddy's plan is to use a small but powerful motorbike engine mounted behind the driver. They'll have to figure out how to connect the motorbike chain to a back axle. And to keep things super light, they plan to build their very own mini dragster frame. Each team has to choose a driver for their dragster. And with the Scrap Daddies keeping things light, team captain Ken is the obvious choice. Ken, 180. Mark, 210. Sean, 250 plus. Okay. We're going racing, guys. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay. You guys happy? Oh, yeah. Go, Let's go for it. Let's go. Come on. The hunt for junk begins. And because we're so nice, we've given each team a quad bike and a trailer to help them in their quest. Neither team knows what the other is looking for, and out here, it's first come, first serve. They can use anything they can lay their greasy little hands on. Isn't that nice? Look at the teams all excited like pigs in mud. You know what? They've got 10 hours to build an entire dragster from all our glorious junk. Will they be able to do it? I have no idea. Why don't you stick around and find out? Welcome back. It's Junkyard Wars, and we've given our junk warriors just 10 hours to build the fastest dragster they can. Let's see how they're getting on. In sun-kissed yellow are Houston car artists, the Texas Scrap Daddies. Their vision is to keep things as light as possible by going for a motorbike engine and building their own frame from scratch. In the next door workshop, the flame fighters of the Chicago fire team plan to plunder their frame from a wreck rather than build one. They're out for power, and Mike and Joe are looking for the gutsiest engine they can find. And it looks like they've struck gold. Got an old mobile. I just pulled a lever. Excellent. Grab it. Do you need help bringing it in? I guess not. Back home, Mike drives a big old fire truck, so a quad bike and an Oldsmobile shouldn't be too much of a problem. But with Joe at the steering wheel, anything can happen. Geez, take it easy. We want to keep this place intact. They've started the day with a crash. An Got expert, it. Rob, right. checks under the hood to see if anything's actually survived. Pinch bar, if you guys are listening. So, Chicago Fire, what's the plan here? Well, the plan is we're going to get this motor out as quickly as possible. What is it that you're looking for in a, in a motor? I mean, is it just a matter of as much power as you can possibly get? As much power as we can find. Right. The more, the bigger, the better. I mean, this is a small block, but it, 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 it's acceptable. We can get a lot of power out of this motor. Right. So it's all coming together. It's coming together quite quickly. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually hoping that uh, we'll win. The key to success for both teams will be to balance the power of the car to its weight. The Chicago fire team are going powerful and heavy. Their plan is to take the engine, prop shaft and rear axle from the Oldsmobile. Their frame and front axle will be scavenged from other cars. Time to wheel in the old for some serious surgery. All right, stop it, Joe. First up, Team Cap Mike gets to work on cutting out the rear axle. All right, one's out. If at first you don't succeed, hit it harder. Next up, Captain Mike and expert Rob delicately set about surgically removing the engine. Oops, I think we broke the windshield. And after some very gentle coaxing, the fireman's enormous engine finally emerges. Hold on. Hold on. Out in the yard, the Texas Scrap Daddy seem to have found an engine of their own. Well, you know this boy was running when she hit. Oh, yeah. Got a little prize for you guys. Uh, what do you want? Right here. Put it in the shade. Kick sand. For you. All right, we saw a front end. All right, there we go. 
but what's the deal with the golf cart? Come on, we're ready. Uh, Time to check out the plan. We're going to use basically the drive line from here, the chain, the sprocket, the motor. We're going to make a tube frame and extend it to 150 inches long. So there's room for a driver to sit down right. and operate the pedals. Ken's going to be our, our, our test pilot. So we will build a dragster around Ken. By going with, with a small motor setup, and you've got to somehow get the power to the rear axle. Right, that's going to be our key. But between the golf cart and this, we've got a dragster. With less power, the Texas Scrap Daddies need to keep the weight down. The plan is to build their own super light classic dragster frame and mount the engine behind the driver. The golf cart will provide the rear wheels, but the challenge will be to figure out how to connect the bike's chain to the rear axle. You know, the greatest thing about these two teams so far is they are so competitive. I know, I know, it's actually quite frightening. I mean, you've seen Mike, the Chicago fire, who drives the fire truck at home, and obviously <laughs> thinks the quad bike's a bit of a fire truck. He keeps pleading that, you know, I'm qualified to drive things very dangerously, I'm uh, safely. <laughs> yeah, because firemen don't stop at red lights. No, they don't. And over here, at the, the Texas uh, Scrap Daddies, I love Sean. Sean is, he's insane. <laughs> you could just see him, like, laying in the oil, going, oh. <laughs> Back in the 40s, the audience for dragster racing was exclusively male. But as the cars became sexier, everyone suddenly developed an appetite for speed. Today, these dragsters hit over 300 miles an hour in just a quarter mile. One of the pioneers is car builder, driver and all-round test pilot Pat Foster. Over a 40-year career, Pat has built over 70 cars held world speed records, and has even survived to win a few races. So who better than Pat to be our truly independent junkyard judge? Ah, Pat. Hey, George, how are you? Ah, I'm groovy. Thanks for making it, man. Yeah, good to be here. What do you think is the key secret to drag racing? Well, I th I've heard both teams mention weight to power ratio, and weight to power ratio is simply can we build a, a lot of horsepower in the lightest car we can? and uh, try to match those two things and both teams are well aware of that george the chicago fire guys have got a big engine a big transmission a big rear end big axle tires wheels so it'll behoove them to get it as light as they can whereas the scrap daddies have got a much smaller power plant transmission but they still have to consider that they have a lot less horsepower so their car has to eventually be a lot lighter than the chicago fire guys car so they both have that firmly you've got your life savings on the line. You want to retire tomorrow. You okay. don't want to go back to work. Where are you putting that money down? Which team? Uh, well, that's a tough question, and I've got $76 put away. <laughs> so Big I, money, baby. Well, Come on. and when I'm talking about that kind of money, I want to be sure, and so I'm going to go with the, the junior dragster approach or scrap daddies at the moment. All right, you got it. Okay. Having cut the life out of their Oldsmobile, the firemen doomed the donor to the junk graveyard. Okay, watch out. Things are looking good for Chicago Fire, but what Joe doesn't know is there's trouble brewing back at base. Expert Rob is desperately trying to convince Captain Mike to change their plan. Right, I mean, if we, if we go with another frame, it's going to take a lot of time to cut it down, to get it out. He can weld, I can weld. Right, because I was originally thinking just to, to save the frame that we just took all this out of. Yeah, but that would take a lot of time oh, to get that out. You have seven hours left to fight! With time running out, Captain Mike bows to his expert's wisdom, and the team get to work, building their own frame. How's everybody feeling so far? Beautiful. Good. All right, good. Now, Rob, you decided... So I guess, well, you spearheaded anyway, I'm sure you decided as a team, uh, to all of a sudden go with, uh, with the, this kind of custom-made chassis. Well, I think we were running out of time a little bit with yeah. trying to cut a frame out of a car to use that. I decided that his idea was, was more worth the effort because I think we're going to get a beautiful product out of this and it'll be homemade, not made by GM. Yeah! Made, made by uh -huh. Chicago Fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right! In the Scrap Daddy's lair, fantasy seems to have taken hold. Driver Captain Ken is being custom tailored for his dragster. Get your helmet on. Uh, welding time. 
Mark, the team's top welder, wastes no time in turning Ken's fantasy into reality. Do you have nerves? Of steel. Really? <laughs> you're not phased by driving this at all? <laughs> Did we pick the right guy? See? I told you. <laughs> He's getting well into this already. There's a little screw loose. There, did we pick the right guy? <laughs> On Junkyard Wars, the only way to beat the clock is to pull together. Dan and welder-in-chief Mark are forging ahead with their frame. That's what I'm talking about. All right, there you go. One, two. But with lots of welding still to do, Mark's worried that the team's plan is already being jeopardized. I think that's too heavy. I thought we were going to use that. I think we're wasting time on the steering wheel, dude. I mean, that's a heavy piece right there. We're going to make our own steering wheel. I've seen, you've seen how I bend the pipe. Let's just make it. I have it all. It's all done. I'm done. Okay, okay. I'm done. Right. Okay. So by the time you want to argue about it, right. we're done. Okay. Feeling the tension, Captain Ken tries out a bit of new age right. management. That's the huddle around the frame. All right, all right, all right. Hey, let me, let me come, let me come okay. down. You guys ready for me to come back? Calm down, down. Okay. calm down. <laughs> let me look. Rome. Um, <laughs> Mark, baby, how you doing? Okay. While Mark meditates, Joe, the Chicago Fire's top welder, prefers a different kind of therapy. It seems that front axle from the VW Bug just won't budge. A stubborn little sucker. Voila. All right, teams, you got five hours left. That's five hours. Plenty of time. With the front axle now in place, Joe tackles the other half of their dragster. Stop. Stop. It's straight in the car. The position of the engine in the car is absolutely critical. It's now being welded firmly into place. But Pat, our judge, as a major concern. Uh, the, the Chicago Fire guys, something that I don't think they've given enough attention to is, is the problem of traction. In other words, traction being the, the tire being able to drive the car down the strip efficiently. Right. They've got a lot, of, a lot of horsepower with a big V8 motor. And at this stage of the game, seeing as they developed their own chassis, it's beyond me why they didn't put the, the engine further back in the car closer to the rear end to put some weight on the rear tires. The original plan was to put the engine and seat as far back as possible. The heavy engine would press down on the rear tyres and make them grip the racetrack. But with the engine so near the front of the car, Pat's worried that the wheels will just spin at the start line and lose the fireman valuable seconds. The team seemed completely unaware of their slip-up. Pat's not too happy with the Texas Scrap Daddies either. Well, the Scrap Daddies had a great plan to start with, and their, their chassis part of it is lovely, but it doesn't have anything to do with winning the race. The thing that's going to make this thing win or lose is laying over there on the bench. The rear half of the chassis is still a dream. It's not been done at all. Okay. They don't really have a way yet to hook the, the motor to the rear axle to drive the car down the strip. But you're saying they've got a car and no engine. Is they've got about a half a car and no engine. <laughs> Aware of the problem, Ken thinks he's found an axle. You okay, Wiley Coyote? Yeah, baby. But not even the powers of Captain Ken can fix this one. Like a bicycle, the Scrap Daddy's motorbike is driven by a chain. To get the power to the wheels, they'll have to find, or make, a rear axle and somehow fit a sprocket onto it. All of this will have to be carefully aligned as unless it's dead straight, the chain could shake itself loose in the middle of the race. Go back out, find an axle on a front-wheel drive car, or gear. They've still no way to turn the wheels, and with time running out, the Scrap Daddies know they've a serious problem on their hands. Unlike Chicago Fire, who seem blissfully unaware that their dragster might just spin the wheels and not go anywhere at all. Yahoo! Well, this little junkyard wars is turning into quite a little soap opera. The Texas Scrap Daddies have a really cool looking car, but may not have a way to turn the wheels. Whereas Chicago Fire has a big motor and can turn the wheels, but it's so light that that's maybe all they'll do is just turn the wheels. Will they figure out the problems? Stick around and find out. Welcome back to Junkyard Wars, where time is fast running out for our teams who are struggling to build dragsters using nothing but a pile of old junk. With less than half the day left, both teams are beginning to sweat. 
In the yellow corner, art car makers, the Texas Scrap Daddies, have built themselves a super light frame, but still haven't figured out how their motorcycle engine will turn the wheels. The hunt for a back axle continues. Next door, our Chicago firemen are feeling pretty confident. The seats welded into place, the roll cage is taking shape, but the team remains strangely oblivious to potential disaster. I got a worry. Shall I tell you what it is? What? Well, when you first pointed out your drawing on the board to me and there was the kind of engine in the middle and then the seat at the back, and then we talked about it and we said, no, but of course in a dragster you want all the weight at the back so that you get all that traction and the power on the back wheels. You know... And it's kind of, it's up there. You're right. We, we, we kind of changed our minds halfway through. We decided that it would be better to bring it a little bit forward because we have the steering problem, we have to bring the seat over to one side. Normally the seat's in the middle, but right. we have a steering problem we still haven't hammered out yet, but we're going to have one long rod instead of trying to make something go around the engine which would be very difficult right. or something underneath so we decided to put but this why does that help having the engine further forward mm. i mean why couldn't you still have the straight rod and the engine four foot back it, we just we just thought it would be a little better for the driver a little more safer presumably your only solution is to stick a whole load more weight on the back or we could add the the more hefty member Ah, who would that be? I don't know. Probably uh, maybe our expert or me. I guess I'd be the heaviest. I was going to say, I think maybe you qualify. Hey, <laughs> hey, take it easy now. <laughs> Guys, you've got two hours left. Two precious hours. Go get them! Okay. The Scrap Daddies are feeling the pressure. They're still missing their vital back axle. And as time slips away, the team slides into crisis. Okay, okay. Why don't you tell Sean the measurements of that steering column, and he can cut pieces and then you can go to the floor pan, and I okay. can finish this. Or I finish this, and you do that. I'd I know work. steering. Huh? I know steering. Well, I know, but just let me finish <coughs> welding, and then we'll... Thank you! Let me finish Woo! welding, and then we'll come back. Let's just finish this so I don't have to think about it no more. Are you crazy yet? Dan is losing faith in the team. It's just we all need to do a job now. Yeah. If we're babysitting each other, we're never going to get it done. I think we'll get it done. Matter of fact, I know we'll get it done. You just have to be patient with Mark. We got it. So both Dan and Mark get to grips with steering. That's all the steering we need. Next door, the Chicago fire team captain, Mike, has taken a more conventional approach to steering. But how are they going to connect the steering wheel to the front axle? The answer is classic junkyard. What about that for steering? It's, a, it's something to look at, ain't it? This is too, too it's good. It's just too <laughs> cool, man. I think that'll fly, huh? So, Chicago Fire, how are they going to steer? They've got their steering 90% whip right now. It's a little ugly the way they did it because they took two drive shafts from the steering wheel to the steering box, which makes it a very large diameter. So pretty, it isn't. Efficient, but, but it is. ugly doesn't lose a race. That's right, and it has a look that I'm always after in, in anything I do, and it's called the done look. I've got a real good look at the Scrap Daddy system, and it's a system that could be taken right out of every go-kart that was ever built. There's Almost tires. every kid that's ever driven a go-kart has looked down and seen a thing that goes back and forth like this that, that has a rod that goes to each tire. I saw that thing. Simple, light, beautiful system. However, still no engine back there. Well, the engine's laying on its side. Let me tell you, the, the time factor is, is going to weigh heavily on them, and I referred to this early as kind of the fluff, but this front part of this car has nothing to do with a drag race. But you know I'm going to do it now. Okay. You know what? I did it a while Where's ago. Where's my money? <laughs> yeah, I did it. Because your money this morning was on the scrap days. Okay. Now, I'm giving you the chance. You can take the money back out, and you can put it on the other team. You, you, are you going with the scrap days? You're going with Chicago Fire at this point in the game. Uh, seeing as this isn't the final time you're going to ask me that, I'm going to still go with the scrap daddies. Performance-wise, I really? think there's a big edge if they can get it to the church in time. That may be their problem. But Sean may have saved the day. Hey, Dan, Ken. 
Okay. I think we're there. All right. The two bearing blocks might be just what Ken you needs to turn this steel yeah. rod into a back axle. That'll work. Real good deal. <laughs> Sorry, was, babe. That was good scrapping. <laughs> That's why they call us the scrap daddies. Yeah, baby. At last, their motorcycle engine can be positioned. Now, there's still a lot to do, and Mark wants to do all of it. But unless they all chip in, they're not going to finish on time. Here's what we got left, okay? We have a floor, a steering wheel yeah. that you're going to do. Okay. Pedals I'm gonna do that you're going to do. I am, but let's get the motor uh, Now you're going to do the axle and the motor mount. Uh -huh. Okay. We're going to do it together right oh, now. Okay. Let's we go. need to split up. We're down to well, three, you less cut, than three. I weld, you cut, I weld. Okay. Something like that. that. It's not splitting up. One, Cut. two. How you doing, Mark? Wonderful. You sure about that? I'm not feeling the love. Hey, I'm with you, bud. <laughs> so uh, then I got to ask you. Oh, no, I was going to ask you. No, well, no. but I asked, I asked you first. <laughs> I asked you first. No, so I, since I opened my trap first, I want to know, who do you think... Uh, who do you think you do it? My aesthetic preference, if you like, is for the Chicago Fire, but I actually think they're not listening. The Scrap Daddies are more likely to win. Really? You think yeah, so? I do. Okay. What about you? Come on. Well, you know, none as... of your namby pamby. Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, is a father doesn't love any one of his children <laughs> more or less. Which is it? You don't love your family any Scrap different. Scrap daddies? You'll love or them. Chicago you'll Fire? Love them all the same. <laughs> Who do you love it. just a I, little bit more? I, just, I love them all the same. I can't separate them. Oh, look at the time. <laughs> I've got to go talk to somebody. <gasps> How does he do that? At last, the firemen get to spark on, up their engine. Let's fire up. If it doesn't start now, they might as well pack their bags. Yep. Timing. No, no, that's all right. Just leave it inside. I like that. How did that sound, Scrap Daddy? <laughs> With time running out, the Scrap Daddies have finally managed to get their motorbike sprocket to fit onto their axle. Mounting the axle correctly is high precision business. <laughs> you don't want to get this bit wrong. No, not at all. That would be a bad thing. Are you just aligning that by eye, or is this all carefully measured out? Uh, carefully measured out by eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have a check of that while he's out there. How's it look to you? Oh, I can hear this one already. She's going to sneak off and say, I don't know about that. You know, I have to say, <laughs> it looks pretty good. Just don't move yeah. for the next hour. <laughs> Your expert's a good man, I reckon. Oh, yeah. He knows his business. Yeah. Yeah. He's a real good man because he's actually been working with Mark all day and he hasn't killed him yet. So. <laughs> Why is Mark a bit, a bit tough to work with? Oh, no, he's great to work with. You just have to, like, make allowances for... Uh, mm, Two giant yeah. egos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so how are they doing? They're doing all right. I mean, it would be true to say there's a little bit of tension in the camp, and I think most of it caused by Mark. Really? Yeah. <gasps> Do tell us. Well, apparently he has, he's well known in the art car world for having two egos. Oh, really? <laughs> one big one, and then one spare, just in case that one kind of ever dwindles. And he's been, he's been bossing the rest of the team around a little bit. Really? A little bit. A little tiny So bit. this is getting very soap opery. <laughs> Somewhat soap opery. <laughs> but having said that, you know, they've got their axle sorted out now. They reckon the chain's good. They've got their right. sprockets all sorted. I mean, there's a, you know, they're going to be up to the wire, but I think, I think they're going to get there. Oh, I like the social dirt, though. <laughs> you do, don't you? Sure. You're a gossip. <laughs> yes, I've said it. <laughs> sure, I want me a big motor, but what did he say? What did he say? <laughs> Start your panicking. You have one hour left to build your machines. I repeat, one hour. The tires, we got to get these tires. For Captain Mike, there's always room for improvement. Although it's getting dark, he spied some fatter tires for their rear wheels. He knows the more tire that touches the ground, the better the traction and the faster they'll go. We only got an hour, man. We got to start slamming. Within minutes, the new tires are on the car. 
The Scrap Daddies are fitting their golf cart wheels. Oh, we're down to the final ticks. You look at both teams, the Scrap Daddies, okay. Chicago Fire. Who do you go with? Okay. Just to clarify it a little bit, many, many times already I've said this car probably would be the winner being the Scrap Daddies. The Scrap Daddies. Okay. I've changed my mind. The reason being, I didn't get a clue until just here recently that they did not change the gear ratio and went with a tiny rear tire. And I don't think they figured out that that's going to be big problems for them. And it's not something you can change track size. And uh, in that case, I think these guys, if they do a ballast box in this car, the Chicago Fire car, get any kind of a hold of the ground, these guys are going to run out of gear early in the course. I think Chicago Fire is going to going to win the race. The Scrap Daddy's rear axle sprocket was designed to be used with the big motorbike wheel. By going for the smaller golf cart wheels, the daddies have given themselves a potential problem. Smaller wheels are easy to turn, so they'll accelerate quickly. But the downside is that they'll hit top speed early on. So while they may get off the start line first, there's a real risk that the Scrap Daddy dragster will be overtaken before the finish line. Yeah, but it's too late to do anything about it. You know what I'm about to say? Ten minutes left! Ten minutes! It's got a little warm lately. It's just the pressure, babe. Even Mark and Dan finally work as a team. One, two. While Chicago Fire, the new firm favorites, put the finishing touches to their machine. With only minutes left, Mark has hit upon a winning idea. A really big nose. That's awesome. That's awesome. A little bit of magic blue fluid. A little bit of elixir of the gods. The moment of truth. Time to start the beast. We got power, babe. <laughs> I'm gonna start it off. Not to be outdone, Cap Mike wants to show that his is noisier. Hey guys, I'm gonna start it real quick, all right? Start it again. <laughs> See what you started? Yeah! Personal. Yeah, well, it's not over yet. Tomorrow is race day. Will the favorites Chicago Fire triumph with their heavy monster racer and its V8 heart, Oldsmobile rear end, and VW Bug front teeth? Or will the Texas Scrap Daddy's sleek dragster, nothing but an old golf cart, a motorbike engine, and a few bits of tubing, steal their thunder? Stick around and find out. Hey, gang, it's finally race day! Now, yesterday, our two teams, Chicago Fire and Texas Scrap Daddies, had 10 hours to hand-build a dragster. And today, they're going to race them down our very own Junkyard Wars drag strip. <laughs> but first, we get to have some fun of our own. It's Betty by time for you! Oh, yeah! You're oh. lazy. You've had it now! These crazy cars are actually made by the slightly eccentric Ed China. What's your top speed? 
Uh, top speed on this, we don't actually know because we only put the speedo on recently, but it's about 70, 80 miles an hour. Really? Indeed. And you do that, I mean, do you, can you take it on motorways and things Oh, we like do that? regularly, yeah. It's the quickest way to get around. Does this go faster than the sofa? Uh, at the moment, it might do, actually, yeah. The, I mean, the, the sofa, strange enough, is actually in the Guinness Book of Records as fast as furniture. Uh, it can do 80 <laughs> or has done. competed Well, it is actually. indeed, yes. It's very, very hotly contested, but it's, <laughs> it does 87, or well, has done 87 miles an hour. 87? Um, but what we does just it feel like at 87 windy. miles an hour? <laughs> it's actually pretty stable, but it's just it's very, very windy. And it's you like, still get good TV reception on it? Um, yeah, you, it, some of the channels are a bit dodgy, but most of them are OK. <laughs> So have you ever had any particularly memorable reactions? We've had a, yeah, well, there was one. We had, um, it was quite bizarre. We were in the middle of London, and uh, there was this couple having this huge argument, and it was, it was quite severe venom. They were standing quite some distance from each other and really shouting at each other. And then the, the, the woman of the argument so, suddenly saw us and just stopped dead and just stared at us. And then the, the chap was thinking, well, you're not arguing with me anymore. He looked around, saw us, and literally creased up and you know, sort of doubled up laughing. And then they kind of ended up kind of moving together, and then they just put their arms around each other and walked off. It's like kind of remote get, sort of marriage counselling. <laughs> so it's a love mobile. In it is a love mobile indeed. In the pits, there's some serious last minute work going on. The Texas Scrap Daddies are putting the finishing touches on their super light classic dragster. I mean, this is going to be swinging down. And finally, a bit of driving advice. Expert Dan shows Captain Ken the all important off switch. Just swat it down. In red, Chicago Fire are doing a bit of tweaking of their own to their powerful but heavy V8 engine. And in case it's not heavy enough, Joe's welding on a ballast bar. Their chosen racer is fire truck driver Mike, and the team are feeling pretty confident. If you take a look at raw power, and you go over there and look at little teeny power, look at how little that thing is. Big, woo, woo. Little. <laughs> you know, Pat, I think it's pretty darn nice of us to give them a test run here. You bet. I think they're going to both appreciate it before we're over with this day, too. And the Chicago Fire guys, I don't know if you've noticed it, but their regular driver's not in the car, their expert is, who has some race car experience. I think they made an excellent choice there. Well, Chicago Fire's up. Let's see what they do. All right, let's see it. We've allowed both teams one test run before the race. Chicago Fire were worried about spinning the wheels at the start, but with just a squeal, the team are pretty All pleased right. with themselves. Holding back on Looking on, the Texas Scrap Daddies know they have some stiff competition, and expert Dan is feeling the heat. Right. Now look at the pressure on me. How does it feel? <laughs> Feels good. So you're looking forward to it? Yes. Nervous? No. Not Excited. Not even a little bit. I want to get the adrenaline bit. going. He's a daredevil. <laughs> He's a little bit nervous. I know him better than that. Yeah. Time for the Scrap Daddy's test run. But even at the starting line, their engine is sounding a bit unhealthy. I think it's too much air. Hear that? We'll fix it after we beat him. <laughs> and it doesn't get any better. There seems to be a problem changing gear. Now, it sounded like he was really having a hard time shifting. Cause yeah. It, because y you were worried about that he would run out of power, but it sounded like the power was still there for, yeah, for an they, eighth of a mile. Yeah, he was having trouble shifting. Maybe he'll learn a lot on that run. What do you think the problem is, really? Do you think that the carburetors might be out of sync? Car. You know, one's opening before the other? Or? I don't really care. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Our only problem right now is going to be the shifting. Right. That, that's it, and I'll work on that. But do you uh, think he's best off not working up through all the gears, but kind of jumping some? Yeah, unless we can find a, a happy medium back there. But it did run good. The testing's over. All that's left to do now is a last-minute paint job. This is the blood of victory. <laughs> Chicago Fire! Texas yeah! Strap Daddies! You guys ready to race? Yeah! yeah! Now here's the way it works. Remember, three separate runs, and the winner will be declared by the one quickest time out of those three runs. All right, so now take your dragsters to the starting line. Go get them. Yeah, let's go. The 
rules are simple. The teams will compete in a head-to-head -head race from a standing start over a straight eighth of a mile course. They'll have just three chances to get the best time they can. And it's the fastest time that will determine who gets that coveted place in the semi-finals. And we'll be measuring the time down to one thousandth of a second, starting from when the vehicles cross this start line and ending when they cross the finish line an eighth of a mile up the course. When they get there, I'll be there to meet them. So now you've seen the test run, they're at the line, no more fooling around. This is going to seal your retirement money for sure. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think? Who's going to win? Well, I, I'm afraid I haven't changed my mind. I, I, my money's still on the Chicago Fire. They started out with a simple concept. They pulled it off quite nicely. <laughs> Potentially the other car is there, but I don't think uh, they're quite there yet in all the details. So Chicago Fire remain the favorites as driver Mike takes his place in the hot seat. For the Scrap Daddies, all hopes lie with Captain Ken. Out of it, didn't it? The Scrap Daddies notched up 9.89 seconds on our electronic timer, but Chicago Fire stole the show with 9.46. Which means close by race. this much, That's right. by That's... this much, Chicago Fire won. That was amazing. Thanks. <laughs> Your time, 9.462. Look, have you seen the scores? It is so no. close. 9.462 for you and 9.891 for them. Beautiful. How did it feel? So we got to win. I feel good now that I know the time. <laughs> Was that 82 miles an hour? Yeah. Get out of here, really? 82, 87. It's almost 83 miles an hour. <laughs> Two pretty happy customers this end. How's the mood down your end? You know what? I haven't talked to the teams, but I am just sitting here giggling like a little schoolgirl with Pat, because which is not a proud thing to see. But that, I mean, within four tenths of a second, that is so great. Hey, this is going to be a really, really great race. I don't know if it can get better than this. <laughs> After the first race, things are pretty tight. Chicago Fire are in the lead, but the Texas Scrap Daddies are less than half a second behind them. With both teams confident that they can do better, it's anybody's baby in the second race. Is it enough to take the overall lead? It seems no one can remember the previous times. <laughs> what was the last oh, run? Hey, are we slower or fast? What was our last run? Desperate, Sean goes to the control room for confirmation. Oh, yeah, baby! Woo! Yeah! Thank you, thank you. It's official. The Scrap Daddies have stolen the lead. Chicago Fire ran 9.29 seconds, but the Texas Scrap Daddies rocked home with an amazing 8.93. There's nothing in it. Boy, is that close. We're, now we're down to three tenths between them, and they each picked up a couple of mile an hour. Heck of a drag race. With just the last race to go, Chicago Fire pull out all the stops. Michael, what's happening? What, you guys just doing a little uh, last minute tweaking? Last minute tweaking, we added some weight to our ballast bar. We uh, let a little air out of the tires to make them a little more softer. Well, you know what, this is the final one. Chips are down. I think we got a good chance. Real good chance. I feel some good love. All right. Go get them, guys. Come on. <laughs> Gentlemen. Hey, hey George. Very hey. nice so far, huh? Oh, Not bad there, huh? You know what? It's nice to collectively see the team smiling. <laughs> first, first time. <laughs> that's a, has, has it ever happened all at once before? That's a real, Not all of us. I, I, I've seen it in sections, but now this is really good. After the second run, the Texas Scrap Daddies steal the lead with a staggering 8.93 seconds. 
But Chicago Fire are only a third of a second behind with 9.29. It is so close. It's the final race and the tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife. This one is going to come down to driver experience. is so close that as the drivers pull up, no one can quite work out who's won. 8-5, 8-5-9. Oh, oh, what's that? I hear the scrap that he's, he's stuttering. Oh my god, it's an 8.589 to an 8.593. <laughs> The Texas Scrap Daddies have won, amazing, by just four thousandths of a second. Oh, look at that! Yeah! I can't believe that. How close is that? How close is that? That's closer than you ever want to cut it, man. It's four thousandths of a second faster. That's such a drag race, it's ridiculous. Oh, man! Man! Unbelievable. <laughs> but as the team celebrate, at the end of the track, Captain Ken doesn't even know he's the hero of the day. It's been an amazing day here at Junkyard Wars. The Scrap Daddies have just won on the last race by a tiny four thousandths of a second. But as the team celebrate their victory, at the other end of the track, their driver, Captain Ken, thinks they've lost. <laughs> The race is so close that everyone's confused about the time. You don't know what I'm going to say to you, do you? I think I do. You don't know that you just won this by... No way! 400... No way! Oh, my God! I thought my time, I thought I was behind! I thought he was... A, I was 8.30 and he was... I thought he was 8.50 and I was 8.30. No. I the board, I thought I was behind. There was four hundredths of a second in it. No way! <laughs> oh, so close, so, so close. close. I thought I had it. It felt so good. I know. It looked perfect. I had to blow in my other two times. <laughs> Back at the start line, the rest of the team share Mike's disappointment. It's a true drag race. <sighs> Who's your captain? Yes! Oh, you, captain. baby, you! <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> Kid! <laughs> Mikey, four one thousandths of a second. <laughs> Why? What are you gonna do? I'm the bull That's now. I'm walking Mikey. down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey. Yeah. How many days? How many bad days? It's a sweet time. Yeah. Nice Mark, job, son. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Don't hang your heads, guys. I'm telling you, that's a half of drag race. Unbelievable. It's like a pro stock final. Hey, you know what our boys' reaction time was? Yeah, I was going to say, were you proud? 500 being a perfect light, he was 498. I'm going to start now. If I'm ever in a fire, I want you to come to the rescue. I'll get there quick. <laughs> I think that they need to quit talking about numbers and realize that they're going on to the semi-finals. <laughs> You're going on to the semi-finals. Come on. Thank you so much. Nice job. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in and watching Dragsters with us. We had a great time. And, of course, uh, come back next time. We're going to have two more teams. Yeah. We've got, we've got dirt. We've got rust. We've got grease. And we've got more monstrous machines. So we'll see you next time on Junkyard Wars. In the next show, we've got some rusty juveniles shooting them out with some young guns. They're building missile launchers. And their ammunition? Punkins.